Christmas. Many years ago, some wise men followed a star to find the light of the world. Today we celebrate the light has come. God has sent his only son, Jesus, as the light that cannot be overcome. Like the wise men, let us worship him together as we sing, O come, all you faithful. God, our Creator, this Christmas Day we humbly come to worship with a song of gratitude, a song of redemption, a song of hope and renewal. We pray for joy in our hearts, hope in our God, love to forgive and peace for all the earth. We ask for salvation for all our family and friends and we pray your blessings on all people. May there be bread for the hungry, love for the unlovable, healing for the sick, protection for our children, and wisdom for our youth. We pray for the forgiveness of sinners, and no matter what happens in the year to come, we ask for your abundant life in Christ. Holy Spirit, fill our hearts with your love and power. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until he, she gave birth to a son, 
and he gave him the name Jesus. your voice together with me in prayer this morning. Light of life, you came in flesh, born into human pain and joy, and gave us power to be your children. Jesus, we celebrate that we know you understand us. We know that you love us. Holy Spirit, Thank you that you continue to reveal the light of life to us today. Father, as we receive your gift of grace today, the gift of your son, Jesus, restore our lives to reflect his light. Let Jesus be seen in us, that the whole world would know your presence, power and love, that the whole world would experience your hope, joy and peace. Amen. It's official. We are down to the last few days of using the word unprecedented. It may just be in my household, but there is a ban on that word in 2021. So let's make the most of these last few days. In this year of unprecedented events, we have come to Christmas Day. There will be many things that I'll remember about this year. One will be the rehearsals for O Holy Night for our carol service. Ask any of the guys in the group what Joe's favourite line is, and they'll know. Offering divine, O matchless condescension. It's a big line and a big song, and we can tell that it must be powerful and good news. But we may not immediately know what it means. Offering divine, O matchless condescension. 
condescension. So let me put it into today's language. What an amazing gift of God. Today we celebrate that God came down to be with us. Today celebrates an unprecedented, unmatchable event of setting aside status and position to be with us. The virgin gave birth to a son and he was called Emmanuel, which means God with us. God with us. Jesus, displaying the humility of God, did not cling to his rights as God, but came to be with us. Or as Eugene Peterson described it, God moved into our neighbourhood. Well, it's easy to get swept up with sentimentality at Christmas time. We love seeing our children reenact the nativity scene. We love to hear songs of angels and wise men, or at least at the beginning of the season. We are reminded of the young country girl who, after a long journey, gave birth to a baby who was placed in a manger. There's nothing wrong with sentimentality, but we need more than superficial sentimentality this year. This year, we've been made acutely aware of the brokenness of our world. So we hear with fresh wonder this morning that God chose to be with us. Those of us who live in Queensland wouldn't have chosen to move to Melbourne this year. We wouldn't choose to move to the US. Even if we did, that choice would be nothing compared to the decision God made. Knowing all the problems going on, knowing that these problems would result in his death, on Christmas morning, God chose to move to our neighbourhood anyway. Our creator willingly chose to embrace our frailty to be with us. That in itself is worthy of celebration. But verse 21 tells us that Jesus did not just come to be our neighbour. The angel said something along the lines of, you aren't to name him Joe Jr. His name will be Jesus, which means God saves. You are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Well, as we've been out and about in our neighbourhood this year, the most commonly requested carols were Silent Night and The Little Drummer Boy. Think about it. Silent Night and The Little Drummer Boy. Don't people realise that these two things do not go together? We live in a confused world. Well, at first we may balk at the two verses in our Bible reading, one after another, that give two different names. His name will be Jesus but he he will be called Emmanuel. But these two names belong together. This is what the incarnation is all about. In the person of Jesus, in his birth, his life, his death, his resurrection, we see the revelation of our God with us to save us. The incarnation reveals the nature of God, loving us so much that he set aside his rights as God to be with us. But the incarnation also reveals the nature of salvation. If all we needed were words of support, God could have found another way. If all we needed was a different political leader, he could have orchestrated that. If we needed some words of guidance, he had done that before. But if we've learned anything this year, we have learned that there is nothing quite like person-to-person contact. God knew this about us, He has made us this way. Jesus didn't come just to make a statement. He came to reveal God in the midst of our chaos. He came to bring peace as he suffered with others. He moved into the neighbourhood of guys like Zacchaeus and brought new life. Jesus joined us physically because that was the only way he could save us. Jesus lived in our body, experiencing our temptations, our frailty, and our pressures, so that he could restore us to be who we were meant to be. We are physical beings, and this year of restricted physical contact has reaffirmed this for us. Jesus came to deal with our sin, not just because our spiritual lives matter, but because he needed to make it possible to present our bodies as living sacrifices to God, holy and acceptable to God. Our embodied existence 
broken though it, broken though it is, matters so much to God that he took it on himself. Today we celebrate that in Jesus, we know that our physical existence is not a write-off. Jesus came to be with us and to save us. Well, when Jesus was resurrected victorious over death, he unveiled a new physical body. There's coming a day when those who follow Jesus will trade in these broken mortal bodies and share in a new incorruptible bodily existence. God is making a new heaven and a new earth and there won't be any coronavirus or cancer, no suffering or pain. Well, this year many of us have been praying for God to just bring it on. But Christmas isn't just about back then and it's not just about that day yet to come. We need Christmas today. Jesus came to be our God with us and before he returned to the Father, he promised that he would not leave us alone. The Holy Spirit is given to us so that we can experience the reality of our God with us to save us today. Yet physical connection still matters. And that's why the Holy Spirit empowers the church to be Christmas people. We embody the reality that Jesus, our King and Saviour, is born. We embody it by teaching each other to live lives that honour God. We care for the physical needs of others. We tend to the sick. We care for the dying. We feed the hungry. We stand with the suffering. We spend time with each other, listening and speaking the words of God to each other. We pray together. We set, our side, we set aside our status and humbly use our skills to serve each other. And as we do this in the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring physical access to the reality that our Saviour is born. We help each other physically experience that our God is with us to save us. This Christmas, be encouraged that our physical our physical existence matters to God. He knows what we are going through. God is with us to save us. This Christmas, hear the call to be Christmas people in an anxious world, to know that the Spirit empowers you to be the physical representation of Jesus' words and actions of grace for those around you. Make the presence of Jesus visible to those you meet today. And this Christmas, be filled with wonder and worship as you look to Jesus, unprecedented, matchless Jesus. Whoever looks to Jesus as to be their saviour and king will be saved. He forever took on a human body so that our fallen, fragile bodies can be presented holy and acceptable to God. He came to earth who left his home in heaven to bring good news and hope sublime to men, offering divine, O matchless condescension. Behold your King, before him lowly bend. Let's receive and worship our Saviour and King this morning.
We know that many of you have not been able to come to church today. Many will not be able to catch up with family and have to make the best of technology for connection this year. Well, we give thanks that we can at least connect in this way. But we also know that because of Christmas, there is hope. There's peace to be found in the chaos. There is joy for God is with us and he is leading us to a brighter future. So let's sing together, joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Let's sing. benediction. Let us go from this place proclaiming that we have seen the glory of God, believing that there is a light that shines in the darkness, which the darkness shall not overcome. And may the love of the Creator, the joy of the Spirit, and the peace of Christ be with you this Christmas and evermore. Amen. Majesty lying in a manger, a king like this, unto us is born a saviour.